Don't forget to show my face this morning.
opportunity to be here in your house to be able to come and give thanks to you and praise to you an offering of thanksgiving and praise for what you have done for you have done a wonderful work for us thank you this morning jesus for your love thank you for your kindness thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you lord for all that you have done in our lives we worship and praise you and give you glory and thank you for everything in jesus precious and ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning to praise and worship our Savior. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. Are you excited about God? I know you are. I know you are. I just got to get you to say it. <laughs> oh, well, we are excited just to be able to know that Jesus Christ is with us. Jesus Christ is with us and he is in us and that um, he is for us. As far as as a man was sharing the illustration about a little girl that couldn't go to sleep. She was afraid to go to sleep in the night and, and she was looking at the moon and everything and, and she began to ask God, I don't know exactly all the words, but she asked God about, or asked her mom about the moon and she said, that's God's light. And she asked about God and she said, well, God is God never goes to sleep. He's he's always awake. He's always watching over us. And the little girl is like, "Well, now I can go to sleep because I know that God is always watching over me." <laughs> Amen. And so it is. We should rest assured that whatever we're going through, whatever we're facing in life, God is always there watching over us. He's always there watching over us even when we don't realize it. Amen. He's there. He's there faithfully taking care of his children. And we're thankful for each and every one of you here this morning in the house of the Lord. And for you that join us online, we welcome you. Get in and get a blessing from the Lord. And let God do something for you. At this time, we'll receive the Sunday morning tithe and offering. Um, Marvin, would you help us? Please. Even all Christians do pay their tithe and give in the offering. As unto the Lord. Yes, Marvin, would you please pray, sir? Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for your giving. And for you to join us in line this morning, just open up your heart to God. Reach out to the Lord. You have a need while the service is going on. Just pray. Seek the Lord and 
God can hear and answer your prayers and he can bless you. Amen. Any power? Ashley needs power. There is power, power, power. power. <laughs> I got it. Piano lady needs to come. She's going to finish the song.
identity, right? Don't let anybody steal your identity. <laughs> if they do, then I guess they'll become a child of the king too. <laughs> we thank God that we belong to our Heavenly Father. We have a new family. Aren't you glad to be a part of the family of God? Not just this church here, but throughout the entire world. People that have gone on before us and those that will come after us. It's a huge, extended family. Amen. One man was trying to discipline his kid. And he wasn't part of his family, but he was just visiting. And um, he asked him, he said, you ever heard about an extended family? He said, no, what is that? He said, that gives me the right to to extend my belt (laughs) to you. But that's not what God is talking about. (laughs) We're part of the extended family of all race, all culture, all color, everybody around the world, all that belongs to Jesus Christ, Jews and Gentiles alike. And that's a a huge family. As the Bible talks about God coming back with 10,000 times 10,000 of his saints, multitude upon multitude. He said, a number that cannot be numbered. Amen. Now, if if only 144,000 was going to make it to heaven, I'm sure we can count to 144,000, right? As some religion will teach. But thank God there is more than that. There's a number that cannot be numbered of every culture, every tribe, every tongue. God is an all-inclusive God. But whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? That's a wonderful thing. That means we all have the same rights. In Jesus Christ. I want to read to you this morning though from the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. We'll use verses 5 through 10 as our Bible reading. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 through 10. Verse 5 For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, and thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things, all things put under him, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect, through sufferings. And I want to use part of verse 9 for our text this morning. In verse 9 where he said, But we see Jesus. Or we can take part the last part of verse 8. I don't have to put it out there. I'll just read it. He said, But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus. I want to use that. And with the help of the Lord this morning, I want to preach on that and the message entitled, We see Jesus. We see Jesus. Let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Jimmy, would you please ask God's blessing upon the message and the messenger? Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here this morning. And for all that you do for the Lord, I want to continue to encourage you to be a witness for Jesus. Sharing is caring, right? Continuously be a witness. Throughout the week, I've been inviting people, even at work, at the gas station, wherever I go, if I can get an opportunity to talk to someone, just to give them a card and to invite them to the house of the Lord. And we are making, um, we already ordered it, it's not here yet, but new pamphlets and cards that will have all the schedule on it and have the online service and everything so it'll be better so you can give it to people and wherever you are you can be 
a voice in this wilderness. And Lord knows our country needs Jesus. Amen? Our, our community needs Jesus. Our family needs Jesus. The world needs Jesus. He is the answer. Amen? He is the answer. And so that's the, the message tonight, this morning is we want to see Jesus. Amen? In the church, we want to see Jesus. It's not about the preacher. It's not about the musician. It's not about all that. We're here to lift up Jesus Christ. And we're here to magnify the Lord because he tells us, uh, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I will draw people. Amen? Thank God. For Jesus Christ, he is still the answer for everything in our life. And so we want to encourage you to be a witness. And you that are viewing us online, it's only a click away. You can share it on your Facebook page. You can share it and your family members can hear it. Your friends can hear about Jesus also. So be a witness for the Lord. We want to see Jesus, we, but we see Jesus. I want to preach about that this morning. And the Bible, in this Bible reading, he is discussing the creation of mankind when God created Adam. He said in verse 7, he said, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of thy hands. And so we know he's speaking about uh, when God created Adam in the garden. God created everything and he gave him dominion over everything. He was to rule the earth. He was to rule all the creatures, uh, all the animals, everything was under his subjection. And now that we're looking at the world, we see that that's not the case, right? If you don't believe me, you can go mess with a wild tiger out there and see who's in charge, right? And see that they're not in subjection any longer to mankind. The man doesn't have control of everything because of his disobedience and his sin against the Lord. He gave up that authority. And he's using this, this is something that we can all understand. We all know what elections are like in America because we live here. And we know that election takes place in November and that uh, in the month of November, a new president is elected to be, you know, the president of the United States. But even though he's elected in the month of November, he doesn't take his power until January. He's known as the president-elect, but he has no authority to do anything until power is released or turned over to him to do so. And so that's what he's using, the same kind of thing he's describing here, that Jesus uh, died to redeem us from the curse of Adam and Eve when they sinned in the garden. And the devil, of course, they turned over power to Satan. They gave him all the authority. Everything that was given to man was turned over to Satan when they sinned in the Garden of Eden. And the Bible tells us that Jesus came and he died on the cross and he rose again from the dead to regain or to take back that power, that authority. Everything that Adam lost was regained in Christ. But Christ is not fully empowered yet. He is the king elect, as we know, and there's a, an appointed time to where he will destroy Satan. He will bound him and cast him into the lake of fire, and then he will take his full power, and he will rule and reign upon the earth. He will set up his kingdom, and you and I that are saved will rule with him. And so, same exact thing that we understand in, in, the, in the political realm, there has to be an appointed time for Jesus to take full authority and power. And that's the reason why man and sin is still ruling and the devil is still having a heyday in the lives of people is because Jesus hasn't taken his full power yet. Amen? But one of these days he will. However, though, those who will accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, those who will believe the gospel that Jesus died for their sins and rose again from the dead, they can have that power working in their life right now. They can have that authority working in their life right now. We don't have to wait until Satan is subdued completely under the feet of Christ. We can enjoy the power of God at this very moment. We can enjoy 
power over sin at this very moment. We can enjoy power over the flesh at this very moment because Jesus is ruling and reigning in our heart. And so verse 7 and 8, he told us, he said, Thou madest him, I read this to you a little bit ago, Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedest him with glory and honor. Thou didst set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that was not put under him, but now we see not yet all things put under him. So he, he told us that God created man to rule the world, and because of man's sin and disobedience, man has subjected or give up everything to the devil. But in verse 9 and 10, he let us know that God gave us a redeemer to restore us back to God, to, and, and to have that authority over things as God showed us. He said, verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And so he's letting us know that through the death of Christ and through the, 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 the atoning work of Jesus Christ, that power and authority can be once again given to mankind. Amen? Man, you all excited this morning, I can tell. <laughs> I'm here preaching, I'm looking at y'all, I said, God, you're going to have to help me, I have to power through this somehow. <laughs> They're all daydreaming already. <laughs> all right, let's, read, let's tune in again just for a little while. <laughs> so what is the message? The message is this, it's been over 2,000 years since Jesus came, died for our sins, and rose from the dead for our redemption, and he ascended back to heaven to restore us, to restore everything to us that we lost in the Garden of Eden. But as we can see in our world today, that 2,000 years later, things are still in a mess. Amen? The world is still in a mess. People are still messed up. People are still hooked on all kind of substance and drugs and, and their lives are being destroyed in all different ways. People, even those who want to change, can't find the ability to change. They're tired of their lifestyle. They're tired of living in sin. They're tired of, of drugs and they're tired of alcohol and all those things that are destroying them. Yet we find that they can't break free from the power of Satan. They can't break free from the devil. The devil is still ruling, but his time will run out and, and, and his time will come to an end. But what about right now? What about those who want to break free? There is hope. Amen? There is absolute hope. Yes, Satan is still ruling in the lives of those who are not saved and those who don't know Jesus Christ. He's still their master and he's still destroying their life, but he can't do it for those who accept Christ into their life. He said we see Jesus. Yes, we see all the destructive power of Satan. We see what he's doing in the world. We see how he's destroying marriages and families and lives and all these things. But yet, we also see something else. We see Jesus. Amen. We see the one who died on the cross for our sins. And we see the one who rose again from the dead. And we see the one who is here where he said we're two or three are there gathered in his name there he is in the midst amen and so we see jesus this morning and we see that there is still hope for humanity there is still forgiveness of sins there is still cleansing there is still born again experience there is still holy ghost power there is still the authority given to those who will accept jesus christ as their lord and savior and so all hope is not lost this this morning all hope is not lost this morning yes there's there's much evil in our world today 
Yes, we still live in a wicked and adulterous generation. Yes, people's lives are still being destroyed, but thank God we can see Jesus. Amen. Thank God this morning there is hope. Thank God this morning there is a way out of sin. Thank God this morning there is a way where man can be born again. They can be cleansed. They can be washed. They can be restored. They can be renewed. They can have God in their life. Once again, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank God this morning we can see Jesus in the midst of all this wickedness. Amen? Amen. Thank God this morning we can still see Jesus. He's still that light that shine brighter than the noonday sun. Amen? He's still that light that can shine in the darkness of our society, in the darkness of, of, of mankind and in our community. He can still shine bright. He can still let them know that there is a way out. There is still hope. There is still a way out of their situation. Thank God this morning that Jesus can still break the chains that are holding men and women bound. Amen? We see Jesus. Yes, we see all the problems. Yes, we see all the wickedness. But we also see something else. And that's what makes the difference. God has opened our eyes to see Jesus Christ. We see the one who died and conquered death. We see the one who died and rose again from the dead and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. We see that one who came out of the grave and said, If any man will come unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. Amen. We see that one who still extend grace and forgiveness to all mankind. We see that one who is able to take a drunk and make him sober. We see that one this morning who is still able to take someone who is hooked in drugs and their mind is messed up and set them clean and, and clean them up and give them a brand new start. Amen. We still see that one who is able to take someone who is hooked on all kind of ungodliness their life is so so uh, uh, buried in sin and unrighteousness we see jesus christ who is still able to break to break the stronghold of sin and to set men and women free and that's the one we want to share with the world that's the one we want to tell people about jesus is still able to set men free amen jesus is still able to break the the the, the bondage that Satan have oh, in, in the lives of men and women and to set them free, to open up the prison doors and to give them hope and salvation this morning. We see Jesus. Amen. There is hope. There is hope this morning. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 1, 8, 1, 18, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, he said, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishly foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of God amen thank God this morning thank God this morning that the cross still have power to save thank God this morning that as we show people Jesus we're not here to give them a, a financial lecture we're not here to give them a good feeling we're here to tell them that Jesus Christ is still able to set them free Jesus is still able to set them free Jesus is still able to put their life back together. Jesus is still able to, to put their marriages back together. Jesus is still able this morning. We see Jesus. If your life is in a mess, it's because you've been looking at all the wrong things. If your life is in a mess, it is because you have not lift up your eyes and look to the hills. You have not lift up your eyes and look to Jesus. If you look to him, he will help you this morning. If there are still things in your life the need uh, uh, need some help with look to Jesus he is still the answer this morning amen he said if you're perishing that means the preaching of the cross is foolishness to you or if what I'm preaching to you this morning is foolishness that's a good sign that you are perishing or on your way to hell but if you will accept Christ into your life if you will let Jesus come in if you will open up your heart and say Jesus I believe that you died on the cross for my sins I believe that you
you rose again from the dead. I believe that you ascended back into heaven and you are there ready and willing to set me free. If you will accept Christ into your life, he said, but unto us which are saved, he said, it is the power of God. Amen. It is the power of God. We see a way out of sin. We see a way out of this false, phony, plastic world. Amen. We see a way out of all this mess that the world is trying to to show us uh, and all these things. Uh, yes, we can be better. Amen. Our life can be successful. Our marriage can be successful. Our family can be successful because we're not looking at the world. We're not looking at the, at the, at the things that the world is trying to show us. We're seeing Jesus, uh, the one that gives us victory over all things. Amen. Let's look to him continuously because he's still the answer. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse 12, he said, But as many as receive him, to them give he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You see, there are those just like the Jews. Jesus came to the Jews and he brought the good news of salvation. He brought the message, the light is coming to this dark world. He brought the gospel message to them, but they did not receive him. They pushed him away. They said, we don't want Jesus. Pilate stood there and said, what shall I do with this man? What shall I do with the king of the Jews? They said, let him be crucified. Get rid of him. And they didn't want him, but thanks be to God, there are people that still want God. Amen. Thanks be unto God, there are still those that can see Jesus. Thanks be unto God, there are those who will lift up their eyes and say, God, I believe the good news. I believe the gospel message. He said, unto them that believe, unto them that believe, he said, Jesus is the power of salvation. Amen. Thank God for Jesus Christ this morning. Thank God for Jesus Christ. He's still able to break the chains in our life. Amen. I lost my place. <laughs> but as many as receive him to them, give he power. We got that power this morning. Amen. We have that power. We've been set free by the blood of Christ. We've been set free by the Spirit of God. And all because God has opened our eyes to see Jesus. He is the way out. Amen. He is the way out. As the Bible said, there has no temptation taken you but such as is coming to man. He said, but with the temptation, God will make a way out. God will make a way out. Amen. What is that way? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the way. Amen. You want a way out of temptation? Look to Jesus. We see Jesus. Amen. We see Jesus. You want a way? You say, preacher, I can't get the victory over this. Have you been looking to Jesus or have you been looking to yourself? If you look to Jesus and you focus on Christ and give your life to him, he will give you the power. Amen. He will give you the authority. He will give you the victory over everything that is trying to bring you down. Jesus is still the answer this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Jesus Christ. You see, God wants us to focus on Jesus. He already won the victory. He already destroyed the, the Satan. He, let me read to you in, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. Speaking of Jesus Christ, he said, And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Amen. Now we, now we can preach like a southern preacher. Can somebody say all? <laughs> all trespasses. <laughs> and you, being dead in your sins, thank God for salvation. I'm not dead any longer. Amen? I'm not dead any longer. The Bible said, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. In other words, if a person is living in sin in the sight of God, they are dead. Amen? Yeah. They are dead. But he said, you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together. The word quickened means uh, made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Thank God when God does a work of grace, uh, it's a complete work. 
work. Amen. It's a complete work. There is no trace of sin. God forgives of every sin. As a matter of fact, he goes as far as saying when you are born again, he said, God, take that old nature of sin out of you and he puts a new nature in you. He replaced the problem. That's the problem with a lot of people. They're trying to put a bandaid on the situation. No, God wants to get all the way down. Amen. He wants to get into the very heart of the problem. And that's the reason why it is so important for people to really genuinely become born again, not become religious, not become another church goer, but genuinely being born again of the spirit of God, where God comes in and changes us from the inside out. Amen. And when God comes in and when Jesus comes in and when he changes from the inside out, then we can say he forgive us of all trespasses and we are no longer dead in sin but we are alive in Jesus Christ amen in verse 14 he said blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them. And so he's showing us uh, that Jesus already won the victory. Amen. Jesus already claimed the victory for us. Uh, and that's what the Apostle Paul was saying. He said, I have not yet attained or I have not yet uh, uh, apprehended that which for Christ, that which Christ already apprehend for me. In other words, he's saying Jesus already sees the victory. Jesus already uh, won the victory for us. He said, but I haven't attained to it yet. He said, I forget those things which are behind. And he said, I press forward to those things which are before me. In other words, he's saying Jesus already won the victory for me. Now it's up to me to take it. Now it's up to me to make it into heaven. Amen. Now it's up to me to get to God and to be what God wants me to be. Thank God this morning that Jesus, the God that we serve, is a victorious God. And if that God is living in you, if that God is part of your life, then he has given you the victory. Amen. He has caused you to triumph over the enemy. Yes, as I shared in the beginning, Satan is controlling this world. We know that. Amen. Look at all the mess that's going on. God is not behind that. Amen. God is not behind that. All the racism and all the division and all the prejudice and all the wickedness and all the unfaithfulness that's going on in the world. God is not behind that. Satan is still in control of the world because Jesus hasn't taken his full power yet. He will. Amen. He will. He will become the king of the world when, when the time is right. The time it is an appointed time for it. But Satan is still ruling the world, but he doesn't have to rule us. Amen. That's the message this morning. He may be ruling the world, but he doesn't have any authority over the Christians. He doesn't have any authority over us. As the Bible tells us, he said in Philippians 4, 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. We can overcome anything when we make Jesus the focus of our life, when we make Christ the number one person in our life, when our eyes are on Jesus, when we focus on Christ, then we can overcome everything. Amen? Thank God for the victory that is in Jesus Christ. He said, we see Jesus. Yes, we don't see everything under our feet. Yes, we don't see everything placed in subjection to us. But he said, we see Jesus. Amen. That's the message this morning. We see Jesus. We may not see us ruling the world right now, as, as, as the Bible promised, but we see Jesus. Amen. We see Jesus. As he said in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. He said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Amen. We're more than conquerors. We're overcomers this morning. Why? Because we are seeing Jesus. Amen. We're looking to Jesus. He is the one that will give us the victory over all these things. And so to get down to the last point this morning, the question is, what do you see? What do you see? Or we can ask the question as the Christmas carol. Do you see what I see? <laughs> Amen. Do you see what I see? Because of all the problems in the world and all the problems in life and all the problems in families, the question can be asked, what do you see? Do you see the devil winning? Or do you see Jesus destroying the devil? Amen. 
Do you see the devil winning? Do you get up in the morning and say, you know what, this is going to be one of these days? <laughs> or do you get up and say, you know what, by the grace of God, I will be successful today. Amen? Amen. Do you get up in the morning and say, with the help of God, I will win this race. With the help of God, I will have a good day today. Amen. It don't matter how I feel. With the help of God, I will be successful. The Bible said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might do what? Anybody know? Destroy. Come on now, say it with me. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, Jesus going to destroy the works of Satan. Amen. He said, for this purpose was it? Maybe I need to start preaching like a southern preacher. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> he said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. That he might destroy the works of the devil. There is victory in the Christian camp this morning. Amen. There is victory to the family of God this morning. There is victory to the people of God because Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. You and come to this man, get ready to to sing and play this morning. We see Jesus. Yes, sir, we're seeing a lot of things going on in our world today. Yes, we're seeing a lot of hardship, a lot of negative things, but thanks be unto God, there's a different side to that coin. Amen? There's a different side to that coin. We can look at something better this morning. I don't have to focus on all the things that are going on around me. I can lift my head up high, and I can see a different person. I can I can see Jesus. I can see victory. I can see faith in God. I can see overcoming power. I can see Jesus coming back again to take us home. Amen. I can see the power of God working in my life. And I can see me having all the blessings of God in my life. I can see miracles. I can see healing. I can see everything that is promised in the word of God. He said we don't see everything placed on the our feet. He said, but we see Jesus. Amen. We Amen. see Jesus. He said in the Bible, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of Amen. our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. Amen. He endured the cross. Thanks be unto God that Jesus went to that cross and he died and he rose again from the dead and he ascended back and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father and now all we have to do is keep our eyes on Jesus. Victory is ours this morning. Amen. Victory is ours this morning. Salvation is ours. Power is ours. Everything that is promised in the word of God belongs to us because we see Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory and honor and praises be to almighty God that Jesus is still for us. And if God be for us, who can be against Amen. us? Who can separate us from the love of God? Who can separate us from the God that conquered death, hell, and the grave? Amen. Who can bring anything or lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, he is risen again. And I'm so thankful this morning that I know God and that he is alive and that I can see Jesus in every situation of my life. Why don't you lift your hands and worship the Lord this morning. She's going to play and sing, and we're going to open the altar for prayer this morning. You can come to Jesus. Anyone that needs Christ, anyone that needs victory, whatever you need, the altar is open. Just come to Jesus this morning. Let's come to Jesus and receive a blessing for our soul. Go ahead. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we preach your word this morning. Lifting up Jesus. Now draw men and women to you. Draw them to you, God. Let them look to you this morning. Let them take their eyes off to all the things in the world and focus on Jesus Christ. Focus on you, for you are the answer for their souls and for their lives. If you to join us online this morning, this is altar time. Let's spend a season in prayer. Let's spend some time praying and seeking God.
So we don't see everything, and we know the world is, is in a mess. It's in a mess. But our life doesn't have to be a mess. Amen? Our family doesn't have to be a mess. We got Jesus. We see Jesus. We see a way. We see a victory in Jesus. And we'll be in service tonight at 630 630 in the house of the Lord and for you to join us online. And thank you and uh, may God bless you and your family. And this time we'll close the service in prayer. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house, God, to worship you, to praise you, to give you, God, all the honor and glory and praise. We magnify you, Lord, giving all thanks and all praise and glory to you. Accomplish your will continuously in our life and bring us back at the appointed time to worship you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.